All right, I'm back from vacation. Oh, no, no, yeah, it was good, thanks. And this video has been a long time coming. You're like, oh, your final one, bro, cool. No. I'll show you how I measure my flashlights, lumens, and candela, and give you an overview on how to make a device to measure yours, or something else to take up space as your significant other might refer to it. Now, mine's never done that, but yours might. Okay, first you need to get a lux meter and a few ANSI slash FL1 ANSI or FL1 rated flashlights that you have seen other people review and test online. I use the Zebralight SC600W Mark III and a Phoenix LD15. Phoenix and Zebralights are good choices because they seem accurate with their lumens ratings. For my lux meter, I use a Dr. Meter lux meter with a model number of LX1330B. They're about $30 to $40 on eBay or Amazon. There are better ones out there, but I don't have any money. So you make the device. The idea behind the device is that it's white and it's curved on the inside. The light meter sensor is placed somewhere to measure the ambient light inside of the device, but without being in direct contact of the beam. Some people use styrofoam balls, some people use milk cartons, and other miscellaneous parts to do this, but my method uses 4 inch PVC pipe. Mine has two bends in it. On one end you shine the light and the other end you put your light meter sensor. And it also looks like a pipe bomb. Now a few design notes here. I built a shitty frame out of some boards and some wire. There's no method to it, but I used a jigsaw, made sure to not carefully measure anything, and put it together with a bunch of old screws and bailing wire that's rusty. Basically, it holds it upright like this. and might give you tetanus if you're lucky. Inside of the tube, I took heavy grit sandpaper and made sure and tried to smooth out all the edges and make it not shiny. The less reflections and angles on the inside, the better, which is why some people prefer to make theirs out of foam balls or just watch reviews and not make one at all. I get it. So then I spray the outside black. I used a matte black spray paint so I could get high while doing it. It helps ambient light from entering the tube, I think. Okay, cool, so you put all the pieces together and affix it to the aforementioned frame. I'm not gonna show this process. So then you put two end caps on it. On one side I cut a small hole, the size of the sensor, and on the other end I cut a large hole, almost the size of the whole end cap. I did this because of big flashlights. Some of my larger lights take up almost the whole 4 inch diameter. Then I cut a piece of plexiglass just larger than the hole and caulked it. This creates a shelf for the light to sit on. Some people might like to make cutouts for the light so less light escapes from it and it centers it better. On the other end I put some velcro to affix my meter. I did this initially because I only had one meter and I needed to use it to do my candela ratings too and you can't do candela ratings in a device like this. It might be better if you somehow made a bracket and mounted it better than I did and allow less light to escape. So now you're ready to calibrate. Some people use sliding scales and they calibrate for higher lumen modes and lower lumen modes. So you have a multiplier for the low ones and a multiplier for the ones like, I don't know, over 3000 lumens or whatever. There's some flashlight science in it, but since I only have a BS in it, I didn't go that far. Now you need to use a mode that is a mid or lower mode. Not moonlight, but one that holds an even brightness for a while and doesn't drop. So if you have a 1000 lumen flashlight, maybe one of the low or the mid modes. Basically, if the mode starts dropping quickly, don't use it. Okay, so take your FL1 rated light, look at the manufacturer specs, find the lumen value of the mode you want to use. I'll use an 8 lumen on this Phoenix here. So I turn on my Lux meter use it in the Lux mode, not the foot candle mode, and then start on the range that gives the most precise figure. Now you'll see down at the bottom there are multiples of 10. Whenever you use brighter modes to measure, you're gonna to have to go with the higher multiples of 10. I'm gonna start out on the low because it's more sensitive and eight lumens will work best in this. It's because I've done this a while and I know what I'm talking about. Okay, no I don't. But if you ever see a one, then that means you need to use a higher multiple of 10 range. Just hit the range button until it stops doing the one. Put the light in the dead center of the shelf. Turn it on and record that figure. That figure is the Lux. So you divide 
your lumens, 8 lumens by 28 lux, and that gives you your multiplier. Mine's in the point in the midpoint 2 range. Now you test other lights, and whatever you're reading on your lux meter, you times that times the multiplier. Real technical terms here. And again, you need to use multiple lights to maybe fine tune your multiplier. So try a few and then go from there. Now you can test all the modes on all your lights, the crappy ones and the ones that aren't FL1 rated. There are a few things to note though. Are you still watching? FL1 standards state that to get the ratings that you use to measure your flashlights, you need to use fully charged batteries that the manufacturer recommends in their specs, if they list it. You also need to make sure you measure it 30 seconds in. That's the point flashlight makers who use the FL1 standard are supposed to measure their lumen values for a particular mode. Also, you're supposed to use an expensive integrating sphere, not something that looks like a five-year-old construction project. You let your five-year-old use power tools, right? Here, take the saw, son. You'll notice on the higher modes or the turbo modes that the lux starts dropping quickly. So like, in all actuality, your 1000 lumen flashlight should be over 1000 lumens at startup. That's of course after you've converted it. And at 30 seconds in, you get your rated mode, and then it continues to drop after that. Turbo modes tend to drop quickly, which is why you don't get your multiplier from turbo modes. Drill that in. Okay, so your lumens is the out the front brightness of the light, the amount of total light the light produces out of the front of the you know emitter and lens. So let's measure your candela, or a non-flashlight person speak, how far your flashlight's beam throws. Now lights with high candela usually have smaller, brighter hotspots when you shine them on an object that's closer to you. Lights with lower have larger, less intense hotspots compared to the spill. If you watch my flashlight reviews like my K70, which is a very intense light with a very high candela rating, you'll know this. Any way to do this, you'll need to use the light meter. Set it to lux, just like it was earlier. Batteries are fully charged, you measure it at 30 seconds in. And for this, you only measure the high mode. That's where the manufacturers get their ratings numbers. So you have to shine it directly on the sensor this time, which is why you can't do this in your integrating tube. So you mount it on a wall, I have it on a tripod screen stand. I stand about 20 feet away, you can stand closer, but I like 20 feet because I can read the meter from that distance still, and some of the higher candela lights have tiny hot spots. And they're slightly larger at this point, so I get a better reading. I put the center of the hot spot of the light in the center of the sensor, then I go to a website, which is my conversion, and it allows me to convert it from whatever feet I'm standing away. So I stand at 20 feet, you enter the lux, and then you hit this button and you get your candela. To get the rated meters, you'll need a fancy scientific calculator known as an iPhone. You enter candela, hit whatever the hell this button is, then multiply it times two, and voila, you just did math you don't understand. Now rated meters isn't quite real world meters. Lumens and candela Measurements are a good way to compare flashlights with the FL1 standard, but don't expect the light to be visible on objects as far away as the ratings say. So if it says a thousand meters, you're not going to see it a thousand meters away. I would recommend looking up exactly how FL1 standards are measured for candela, and it'll shed a little more light on it that I won't cover in this video. You don't have to take my word for it. And again, my figures are good estimations and comparisons between the lights I have but please don't take these as the most accurate and the best. Just, hey man, I'm just trying to double check the manufacturers for you. In my beam shot sections and the reviews I do, I always post my tested light figures and not the manufacturer specs. And if you look at those carefully, you can start to see the differences in lights and what those values are. And my figures kind of back up the beam shot section. Although our eyes don't exactly read twice as many lumens as twice as bright, but that's another video that there's real science involved with, and this video is long enough, right? If you like this, subscribe, like, follow me on Instagram, leave a comment, and while you're at it, why don't you look at a few of my other videos right here, which will appear hopefully in a few minutes, of other videos I've done about flashlights and some reviews that may shed more light on this subject. Thanks for watching.